Hey there, this is Brent Arnold, and today I want to talk about gestures. No, not those gestures people give you when you're driving in your car. I'm talking about gestures for multi-touch. So, here I am in Flash Builder 4.5, and I want to show you an ActionScript mobile project, and we'll build it for the Android phone. And I want to talk about the pan gesture, specifically. So let's jump right in. Go ahead and choose File, choose New, select ActionScript Mobile Project. Give it a name. Let's call this Pan Example. Go ahead and click Next. Now, uh, we just want to target Android. So we'll go ahead and leave it there. Uh, or Reorient's fine. Full screen's fine. Now I know you can't see the bottom here. Uh, anyway, just go ahead and click Finish. All right, it's going to open up and create a blank ActionScript mobile project. Now, what we want to do is manipulate an image. Now, the pan gesture is specifically two fingers touching the screen, sliding in the same direction at the same time. And that will trigger the pan event. So I have an image over here. I'm going to click and drag this. And I'm going to drag it to the source folder and let go. Now. Uh, I'm a jerk. <laughs> when we look at the image, I'll tell you the story. It's kind of funny. Anyway, uh, this example will, of course, work on any multi-touch uh, device that supports gestures. You can use it on iPhone, iPad, Android, phones, tablets, all that good stuff. Blackberry Playbook, you name it. All right, so the first thing we want to do, remember whenever we're working with mobile APIs or any 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 uh, device specific APIs or if you're working with any API let's just say this you always want to check to see whether it's supported and most if not all of the device specific APIs will have some sort of value a boolean that says yes this is supported no this isn't that way you can handle it accordingly you you don't want to write an app where you just assume that they put it on their device. Maybe they download it, put it on a on a device that doesn't have gesture support. Well, you need to give the user a good experience in how to handle that. So, what we're looking at is we're going to say if multi-touch, and I'll just press press Control Space to get the code hinting. Multi-touch dot supports gesture events. So that's that's the uh, question. And it will return true if it does, false if it doesn't. If it does support gesture events, we're going to call an init function. We'll create that in a second. Otherwise, uh, we need to do something. Now, I'm not going to go into all the many things you could do. For now, I'm just going to trace uh, no gestures for you. All right, now let's go ahead and create our init function. So we say private var, oh, <laughs> just kidding, private function init. And it's not gonna return anything. All right, very nice, very nice. Okay, so we've got this image over here and I want to be able to instantiate it, put it on the stage so that we can manipulate it. In order to do that, I want to embed the image. So above my constructor function, I'm going to do the embed directive, I guess we'd call that. So I want to say embed, and then I want to say source equals, and the name of it is I'm a jerk dot JPEG. And uh, yeah. Now just below that, we're uh, this embed is going to embed it, and we're going to call this a private var funny pick, and it's typed as a class. And the reason for that is that it's going to take whatever the object is, uh, and then you can cast it to a different object. Anyway, I don't remember why it's that way, but it just is. So we'll go with that because we're good like that. We're cool. We're cool like that. Okay. So what we've done is we've now assigned, we're going to say, hey, this, I'm going to reference this image. It's going to be embedded in the app and I'm going to be able to reference it. The other variable we want to create is a sprite. 
And the reason for that is we want to add the image to the sprite so that we can then manipulate the sprite on the stage. So we're going to create, let's say, a private var, we'll call it pick, and it's a sprite. Okay, down here we have our init function. We've determined that it supports gesture events. So now let's instantiate our image and we want to get the bitmap data and, and add it to the sprite. So what I'm doing is I'm going to create a variable called picture and it's a bitmap, whoops, bitmap. And then we're going to cast it to, we're going to create a new funny pick. So what we're doing is instantiating a picture bitmap, which is going to take this data that comes in, this embedded image data, and it's going to treat it as a bitmap. Then we're going to instantiate our pick sprite. Sprite. And then I'm going to say pick add child. Let's add the picture to you so that I can reference you. So dot add child and we say picture. All right. Now, once that has been created, now we have this pick sprite, which we can then manipulate. Well, we want to add it to the stage. So I want to say this dot stage dot add child and I'm going to add the pick. Very nice. Okay. At this point, um, what is this? What is this? Oh, bitmap, that's why it's not showing up. It's saying, hey, I don't know what that is. So whenever this happens, and notice, see, we don't have an, we don't have an import for it. Whenever this happens, uh, sit there in front of it and press control space, and it's gonna come up with suggestions. And you say, oh, that's the one, bitmap. Now, notice it added it to the imports. Very nice. Okay, go ahead and save that. All right, whenever we're working with multi-touch, we need to establish what the events we're listening for. So you have touch point or you have gestures and we're doing gestures. So we're going to say multi touch dot input mode equals and then the one we want is this multi touch input mode dot and then of course gesture. Right, so that then that says at this point we want to be able to listen for gesture events. Okay, very good. Now the next thing we'll do, I'm gonna scroll down so you can see. We want to now add an event listener to the pick sprite, so that when we do a pan gesture, we'll be able to uh, do something with it. So I'm gonna say pick dot add event listener. And we're going to listen for the transform gesture event, gesture pan. Wow, look at that right there, number one. Okay, and then we're going to call handle panning. Okay, that's our method we're going to call. Very nice. Now we need to create that panning function. So private function handle panning. And we'll get an event, and we're going to type this as a transform gesture event. All right, it's not going to return anything. We're going to go ahead and do this. Go ahead and save. Okay. Now, what do we do? Well, when we get a transform gesture event specifically tied to a gesture pan, we want to then manipulate the image accordingly. So we're going to say pick dot X, and we're going to add to its existing value the what we call the offset. So it's event dot offset x, right? And the same thing for pick dot y plus equals event dot offset y. What this does is it gives us a value. When the pan gesture occurs, then it triggers this function and it has an offset based on the previous event. And so these offsets then get added to our x and y and if it's a negative offset, then it'll move it accordingly, right? Negative, positive, it'll just kind of adjust it. This will all make sense when we build this on a device, but for now, I want you to get a sense of uh, how we're gonna use this. So we're gonna manipulate it based on the pan gesture. Now, 
when you get the pan gesture, you could do all sorts of things. You could trigger some sort of other uh, thing to happen in your app. You could, you could do any number of things. These are just recognizing these kind of global gestures, which happens to be two fingers on the screen moving in the same direction at the same time. All right. In the next tutorial, we're going to make this. We're going to run this. Oh, in fact, let's just do this. Go ahead and sa save. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to do run configurations and double click mobile app and then it'll recognize it. And then I want to do desktop and we're going to do the old Droid 2. Let's just take a look at this, see what it looks like. All right, now we have this image and uh, of course, you can't see that. Oh, that, that didn't help me. It's a big image, isn't it? All right. <laughs> you can't really see it on here, but basically, where I used to work, this dude would park his car. Notice how he's parked diagonal across a number of parking spaces. Well, I was being funny one day, and I took my beat-up old Ford Windstar, and I parked it diagonally next to him because I thought, I'm a jerk. <laughs> so anyway, that's what that image is. It's me being funny, parking next to some dude who thinks he's cool because he has a nice sports car. But I'm cool too because I got a nice minivan. Minivan coming at you. All right, next tutorial, we're going to run this on the device. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.